We really need to acknowledge that we are not a replacement for the child's biological family, but we are an additional support. We have examples of agencies across the country that are quality parenting initiative sites who are actively doing that work every single day. And it requires a couple of things. It requires you know, leadership commitment to making any kind of changes to address policies and practices that get in the way of children receiving excellent parenting and, and families really being respected and valued partners and scaling out the practices that are important. It requires agency leaders actively working in partnership with the people that are most impacted by policy. As the act has evolved, or what we're looking for foster parents, the recruitment has to change as well. And so uh, we have been really partnering with places that are rooted in the community to try to find families that are But we've also been really looking at the people who are already connected to the child. So I would say that we have a lot more homes that are specific to a child as opposed to general foster homes. That's been a deliberate shift. Um, as we have to really considering um, who does this child know and love, that recruitment strategy gets very different. I think that when, when the resource parent and the birth family member are able to be aligned and are seeing some of the same needs, and they can both bring that to the forefront of a team discussion or a court hearing or a school meeting, whatever the setting might be, that's, it, that's really... Um, it makes an impression when both caregivers or both people who are important to this child are advocating for the same thing, are seeing the same needs. A lot of kids in group homes, residential treatment facilities, they don't receive the same level of visitation or contact that kids in traditional foster homes or other placements do. Um, one of my daughters prior to her adoption, she was in residential care for the majority of her life, honestly. And she had said that visitation was often used as a consequence, where if she wasn't um, following the rules or if she was disrespectful to staff, they would cancel visits with her grandma or she wouldn't be able to have access to a phone, which is so the opposite of what trauma-informed care should be, is that our kids' relationships with their biological family should never be something that is used as a consequence or a punishment or even a reward. It's an entitlement, it's a right, for them to have those visitations. If you are living with this resource, this resource parent, but you do like you have the support from you know a friend's mom or a friend's dad or anything in that nature, um, I believe that you could build that relationship where you're building this. You're not only building that relationship, you're building a support team. An icebreaker meeting is 24 hours after your. Uh, prelim or shelter hearing after the removal's done you go to court um, and so you go to court you the removal all has happened and then after court you, there's a time picked where the resource family biological family can meet up like say at the courthouse or a coffee shop or something and then they can come in and meet they can meet the biological parent uh, and that's where the biological parent can feel comfortable about, oh, this, here's your, where, you know, Susie's at, and I'll be taking care of Susie for now, temporary for now. She's in a good home. She's sleeping well. Do you have a picture I can put by her bed? You know, that's uh, bridging that gap. The agency facilitates a phone call between the resource family and the birth family at the time of placement. Just an introduction, like, hello, I want to tell you about myself and, you know, it's lovely to meet you. Is there anything you want me to know about your child? I'm really looking forward to, to being a partner with you and parenting it. And I'm here for you and I'm here for your child. When I was in a group home, I went to the same middle school and high school and made best friends. And when I was in the group home, um, because I wanted family so bad, I asked to like do like um, stay with my friend's family and they all accepted it. They, they were like, yep, Justin can come live with us, and this, that, and a third. But because they had to go through like so many hoops and huddles from doing a background check to being able to get a home study, all those things, it was a barrier. So we never went through with it because there was no support. It's all about relationships. And if the resource parent and the birth family are able to have 
a conversation initially, just to meet face to face, sit down over dinner or lunch, and just get to know each other as human beings. That creates a lot of empathy on both sides. The biggest barrier to caring for children, even caring for children who had been identified as having the most complex needs, was actually the, the agency's practices and the agency's policies. So little things like whether the agency was providing the resource family information um, about what the child needed, what the experiences that the child had had prior to the placement, what foods the child liked, um, what language they spoke, you know, whether there was anything that they were scared of, what their relationship was like with their natural family and their extended family. Um, oftentimes families were saying they were getting no information at placement that would allow them to actually provide excellent parenting to, ch to children. I can't imagine living with that constant tension or that constant fear of one word from this person, I just upset them in the wrong way and I'm never allowed to see my child again or my grandchild again. In foster adoptive parents, a lot of times we don't realize that that power dynamic is there and that it's going to impact our relationship. And so when we acknowledge that and we even speak it out and name it and say it directly to them and say, hey, I get that there's a lot of fear. I see that there's a lot of anxiety. I wanna let you know I'm coming to you as an equal. And not just letting those things go unspoken, really saying it, giving them freedom and permission to have a partnership relationship with you is so important.